This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, this is the second lecture on uh, target costing, chapter two of the free lecture notes. In the first lecture, I went through the arithmetic. Uh, the, the, there wasn't much involved. Uh, in this lecture, I'm going to, if you look at the last page of the uh, notes, uh, talk through the um, discussion bits. Some people call it theory. I don't like the word theory. But more the written side of it, which is equally important for the exam. So I hope you've got that page in front of you, the last page of chapter two, or the second page. Um, paragraph three says the use of the target cost. Well, that I've mentioned, that the target cost is the cost you're aiming for. You then compare it with your estimate of what the actual cost of production is going to be. So I know I said it in the last lecture, but just make up a couple of figures. You see, if we've decided the target cost is 15 per unit, then if we're going to achieve our profit, we need the actual cost to be less than 15, and if it is fine. But here, if the estimated cost is higher, if the estimated cost is, let's say, 19 per unit, we're not going to get the profit we want. The difference we call the cost gap, uh, $4 per unit. And the question is what we're going to do about it. And so, um, number four, possible ways of attempting to close that cost gap. What we can we do? to achieve what we want, make the product profitable. I mean, of course, perhaps we could put the price up, but that's hard. You know, if our sales department have estimated a reasonable selling price, then putting the price up isn't going to achieve much because it'll mean we don't sell them. We've got to focus on the costs. How can we get the costs down from, in my little example there, from 19 down to 15? Now, it's a pity that this isn't live and I could you could talk back to me. Uh, but an obvious thing you'd do is you'd um, examine the costs. Uh, and look for cheaper. You know, our costs uh, of their 19, presumably part of its cost of the materials, part of its cost of labour and so on. Well, fine. You go through all the costs involved, materials. Well, can we buy the materials from a different supplier and pay a bit less? Perhaps that would save us a bit of that $4. What about labour? Um, can we pay our workers a bit less? Obviously, that would cut cost. Save a bit of the $4. Or can we get the workers to work faster? Because if they work faster, we won't need as many workers. Again, we'll save costs. So certainly, we'll investigate all the costs and see if there's any way of getting everything cheaper. However, far more important, and the real way in which target costing is used, is, is this. We'll re-examine the design of the product and see if, and I'll explain this as an example afterwards, but see if, can we reduce cost without needing to reduce the price? Now let me give you a tiny example. Suppose we make desks. We're launching a new desk. We've designed it. Our engineers have come up with this beautiful design of a desk. Uh, and perhaps the top of the desk is two square metres. It's wood. Well, this may sound silly. It's a baby example. But what about, instead of having two square metres, what if we made it just a tiny bit? Narrower. 
You know, at the moment it's um, two meters across, and one meter deep. Instead of being two meters across, could we make it 1.9 meters? Just a tiny bit, because perhaps then the customers wouldn't notice the difference and would still pay um, the estimated price. But just by taking a little bit uh, off the uh, length of the desk, obviously less material, it would save us a bit of money. That's what I mean by re-examine the design. Can we design it slightly differently so we're using a bit less wood? It'll save money, but provided, of course, that it doesn't make it any less attractive to the customers. Um, Apple. Apple always takes this approach. You know, when they produced the first uh, iPhone, the first iPhone, in fact, was it the first iPad? It didn't have a camera. They could have put a camera in, but they decided, oh, it's the first one. We won't put a camera in the first one. We'll put one in a later one. And when they have a new product uh, idea, like uh, the iPad, they decide how much they think they can charge. How much will people pay? You know, it's Apple, Ooh, they'll pay a lot. All right, maybe they'll pay $500, whatever. And then they start seeing how much is it going to cost us to make it? And if it's costing too much, what bits can we leave out? And so, okay, as I say, they didn't have a camera in the first one they could have done. But they came to the conclusion, now, oh, let's leave the camera out. And we still think people will pay the $500, but by leaving the camera out, obviously it reduces the cost and we can achieve our target cost. So think about what I've said, re-listen to it uh, if you need. But although we will examine it to see, can we buy materials cheaper, can we buy labour cheaper, etc. That is what's so important about target costing. Change the design. And that's why, in fact, target costing usually does only apply to um, new products. Because if you haven't started making it yet, then of course we're still able to change the design. Existing products, it can be used, but it's that much harder, of course. If you're already making something, it's harder to go about changing the design and making it in a different, a cheaper way. Now, finally, if you're still on the um, last page of um, the chapter in the notes, it says target costing is service industries. Um, more commonly, target costing is used when you're producing a product. But of course, plenty of industries don't produce anything that a service industry like a dentist who doesn't make anything, but is providing a service. And as I've written there, it's much more difficult to use it in service industries. It can be used, but it, it is harder. It isn't always possible. And the reasons are those five characteristics listed below. Um, and let me explain, because the words could be used in the exam. Um, and I'll use dentists as an example. You know, you go to the dentist, the product you're getting is the service that, you know, they're giving you a filling in your tooth or whatever. Uh, first of all, it's intangible. Uh, you can't touch it, obviously. A product you can, you can measure a product. You can see it. Um, obviously, well, filling, I suppose there's a filling in there, but you know, the work that's being done, uh, you can't touch it. It's not as easy to deal with. Um, secondly, inseparability or simultan simultaneity. If you're making um, a product, we make it then it goes to the customer. Two separate things. So we can examine how we make it and then start producing and selling to the customer. With a dentist, he's doing the work, the service, at the same time as you are receiving it. We can't, like we can with a product, suddenly stop and say, 
how much is this costing before I do it? It's simultaneous, it happens at the same time. Variability or heterogeneity. Things are different. Well, what I mean with a product, if I'm making this new product, desks, I'm making thousands and thousands of identical desks. So if you do have target costing, target cost $10 a unit for every desk. They're all the same. But of course with a dentist, every uh, person the dentist does a filling for, the work's different. You know, some take longer than others. Um, it's very, a dentist, it's very hard to talk about just a standard service. Is it a big filling? Is it a little filling? Which tooth is it? How serious is it? And so on. And that makes it much harder, obviously. You, know, you can't, you know, if, you're, if every single time is different, you can't really do a target cost for each individual one. Uh, perishability. That once they've done the service, there's nothing there to check. You know, all right, a filling, there is something in there, but you can't check it in the same way. I already said it, a bit like intangibility. You can't check it and measure it in the same way as you can with a product. You've done it, it's over, it's finished. And finally, no transfer of ownership. They're all interrelated, these, same sort of thing. But I'm doing work for you, but I'm not actually selling you anything in the sense of you give me money and I give you uh, this product. Now, I'm not saying that those make it impossible for a dentist to use uh, target costing. But um, I hope, for fairly obvious reasons, it does make it a lot more difficult. Um, and uh, for certain services, it's just, it may as a result be completely impossible. So it's worth a try, but uh, well, I hope you've seen the point. All right, as always, uh, look back through the notes, read the bits I've read to you and check you're happy with them. Re-listen to the lecture if I said anything that's confused you, ask and ask the tutor if anything worries you. Uh, otherwise, do have a go at the, uh, the online practice test. Uh, again, the five MCQs to have a go at. Excellent.